Hello, everyone, and welcome to the online campus for the Life Christian Church. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening from wherever you're watching from. And Happy New Year to happy all Year. of you. Major question, are you allowed to keep your Christmas tree up during... January? During January. I mean, I usually don't take it down until after Three Kings Day. When's that? It's and like why? January 16th. I don't know, actually. Like a Puerto Rican thing? Yeah. Oh. Learn something new every day. When is Three Kings Day? When is Three Kings Day? January 6th. January 6th. So I guess we have one more week left. Yeah. Two all odd prop uh, anomalies. One, we have a Christmas tree, January 1st. The second one is that you are wearing a sweatshirt that says New York. However, where are you currently? Uh, represent. I was born in New York. No, but where are we? Oh, we're in the best city in the world. Ooh. Oh, contentious claim. <laughs> While you're wearing another city's. <laughs> but I love clothing. it here. We live in London. We're super excited about that. And we're excited to host all of you from London because we know that our West Orange campus is also joining us today Welcome. along with our online campus. Hey, if you're from the West Orange campus, give us a shout out in the chat. Say hello. Say repping West Orange. Hello, hello to all the West Orange people. By the way, if we didn't introduce ourselves, my name's Christian. I'm one of our online campus pastors. And I'm Amanda, the other on online campus pastor. And we're so excited that you're joining us today. If you're new here, we are so thrilled. We would love to send you a small gift just to say thank you for being here. And it is our lead pastor Terry's book called Live 10, Jumpstart the Best Version of Your Life. We'd love to send that to you. And if you'd like to receive that, all you have to do is click the new here link. Also, we mentioned people are watching from our West Orange campus. We've got our online campus crew here. If you are a TLCC member or regular attender, whether you go to either campus, we want to know you're on the other side of the screen because we can't know unless you check in with us. And an easy way for you to do that is simply by clicking the check-in link that's available to you either at the top of your screen or in the chat if you're watching live. So yeah, check in with us. We want to know you're here. It helps us serve you better. In a moment, we are going to jump into a time of worship, one of our favorite parts of our online services. Before we do that, we would love to encourage you to share the link of this service with someone who needs to be inspired to the life that God dreams for them, which is a major part of our mission at TLCC. So you can just copy and paste it from the URL, text it to someone, DM it to someone. Whose DMs are you hoping to slide into? in the new year. Mm -hmm. No, but really let us refocus our thoughts <laughs> on God because we want to worship with you. So however you choose to participate, let's worship together. Oh God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. And time and time again, you have proven you do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. Remains the same. Your history can prove. 
What a wonderful time of worship. Thank you all so much for worshiping with, with us today for our exclusively online New Year service for TLCC. Mm-hmm. Hello again to all of our West Orange campus peoples who are joining us today. We're so happy to have you here. And we would love if you are a member or regular attender of TLCC, even if you are part of the West Orange campus, to check in to let us know that you joined us today. This uh, helps our pastoral team to know that you're engaged so that we can serve you best. All you have to do is hit the check-in button for all of our members and regular attenders of both online and our West Orange campus. And if you're new to the online campus or TLCC altogether, we would love to send you a small gift just to say thank you so much for checking us out today. And that is Pastor Terry's ebook called Live 10, Jumpstart the Best Version of Your Life. If you'd like to receive this, all you have to do is click the new here link. All right, so it is January of 2023 can't believe that it is 2023. Do you, Christian, have any New Year's resolutions for this year? Mm, don't fill out of my PhD program. It's a good one. It's probably a major one. Achieve one percent body fat. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. That was a real laugh too. <laughs> what about you online? Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Do you typically set them? I don't think I've ever really set an actual New Year's resolution. Well, set one so I can laugh at it. Not to laugh at my husband when he says he's trying to get 1%. <laughs> well, speaking of New Year's resolutions or setting goals, I know a lot of us endeavor to get back on track or to like really start the new year strong in our relationship with God. And TLCC has a lot of amazing and incredible upcoming opportunities this week, actually, for you to engage in. One of the New Year's resolutions I often have, I don't know if you guys have this, is to read a specific book. For me, it's normally a bundle of books because I have to read but we have a great opportunity for you with a new book that's coming out that you might have heard of that I think can bless you so much in the new year. And that is that our pastor, Terry Smith, is launching his new book this coming week called The Lord Bless You. This book will help you understand how God wants to bless you immensely in your life and how God wants to use you to bless others as well and how this will bring extraordinary fulfillment and meaning to your life. It's a perfect book, I think, for uh, the new year. I agree. And along with the launch of this book, the TLCC West Orange Campus is hosting a really incredible event that you're not gonna wanna miss out on. If you live in the New York City metropolitan area and can attend this in-person event, we invite you to Broadway and Blessing, the Lord Bless You launch party. It's happening this Wednesday, January 4th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at the West Orange Campus. You're not gonna wanna miss out. There's gonna be special performances from some of our amazing Broadway TLCC stars. Haven Burton, she's been in Wreck, Shrek the Musical, and more. Kennedy Coggle, Paradise Square, Wicked, and more. And of course, Adam Monley from Les Miserables. Super excited. I totally wish we could be there. Unfortunately, we cannot fly to West Orange to attend. But if you can, if you can fly there, if you can drive there, if you can walk there, definitely be there. Pastor Terry will also share a few chapters from his book and sign copies of his book if you would like him to do so. So definitely invite your family and friends to this incredible event. Also alongside the book, we are going to be launching a brand new series next Sunday called, you guessed it, The Lord Bless You, 28 Days of Blessing. Check it out. Regardless of your present circumstance, God wants to bless you. Whether you are overwhelmed with abundance or struggling in scarcity. God wants to bless you. Whether you are vocationally satisfied or still discovering your purpose, God wants to bless you. Whether you are holistic and healthy or spiritually sick, God wants to bless you and bless the world through you. God has called us on an adventure to receive and give His blessing. Will you step out and follow His lead? Will you join this journey to extravagant blessing?
This series will inspire you even more to experience God's blessings in your life. And then on top of that, we are going to be launching the Lord Bless You book clubs starting next week. It's going to be an incredible opportunity to engage in deeper community, uh, to be able to understand the teachings of the book and the teachings of scripture on the theme of blessing. So with all these ideas and these opportunities combined, I feel like we're setting ourselves up to experience these extravagant blessings that scripture promises us and that this book helps to unpack. To learn more about all of these opportunities we mentioned, we would love for you to simply visit tlcc.org forward slash bless you. Last thing from us before we send you to Pastor Dan Dean for a wonderful message today is that coming up, we have a wonderful Plus Life Local Day of Service. As many of you probably know, Monday, January 16th is Martin Luther King Jr. National Day of Service. And in honor of uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy, we're gonna be participating in that day of service by serving all throughout our local community in meaningful ways. There's gonna be multiple opportunities and times for individuals to serve families, life group, book clubs. So let's rally around this together as a church and get involved. All you have to do is visit tlcc.org forward slash local to learn more. That's it for us. We're gonna send you to Pastor Dan Dean, who is a longtime fan favorite, if I may say so, of TLCC, a longtime friend of our church and of our lead pastor, Terry Smith. He's a legacy pastor at Heartland Church in Texas and is a world-renowned uh, musician, singer with the famous Christian band, Phillips, Craig, and Dean. We love Pastor Dan. We're so thankful that he's going to be sharing with us today. Happy New Year to the wonderful TLCC family. Becky and I hope that you've had a wonderful Christmas and you're gearing up for a great 2023. I hope I'm one of the very first to tell you Happy New Year. Just to let you know, we've still got all of our Christmas decor up uh, because the Dean etiquette in Texas says that you have to keep your Christmas decor up through the end of the day today. Don't you dare try to get a jump on the rest of us. And if you've already taken yours down and packed it all away, I think you're just trying to make the rest of us look bad. And if you've done it already, you are hereby ordered to go to Pastor Smith's and Sharon's home and help them pack up their stuff. Seriously, if you took it down already, please identify yourself in the chat so that we can all judge you. Just type in the chat, I'm all finished. We want to see who you are so that we can identify you as one of those people. <clears throat> you cannot have a happy new year if you're one of those people. I'd advise you to go back and immediately put some stuff back up just to make the rest of us feel better. All joking aside, I want to thank you for logging on and joining me today for a few moments. Just in case you don't know who I am, let me introduce myself. I'm Pastor Dan Dean, Legacy Pastor at Heartland Church in Carrollton, Texas, and a friend of the Life Christian Church for many years now. And I really do love all of you so much. 2022 was an incredible year for your church and for your community, and I trust and hope that you realize what a blessing it is to be part of the faith community you find yourself in. You are truly blessed. And I consider it a great honor to have witnessed your journey for the past 30 plus years. I love and honor your leadership today, starting with Pastor Sher uh, Terry and Sharon. They are more than just casual acquaintances with my wife, Becky and I. They're dear friends. And then we honor your incredible staff as well. I'm not gonna take a lot of your time today. I know you've got football and black eyed peas and family and all the things that take place on uh, New Year's Day, but I do wanna share a quick thought or two with you on this first day of the new year. First of all, here we are at the beginning of a new year. People all around the world are making resolutions and plans for 2023. 
I heard the other day a new definition of New Year's resolution. What's a New Year's resolution? Something that goes in one year and out the other. Okay, so you didn't like my little New Year's dad joke there, then let me give you another one. What did Adam say to Eve on December 31st? Happy New Year's, Eve. Seriously, when I think about you and your family on this first day of the new year, I want 2023 to be an incredible year for you. I want your family to get healthier. I want you to grow relationally richer. I want you to be blessed financially and for your children to flourish. There's so much I want and desire for you. I'm personally planning on 2023 being a big year for me. I have some exciting things planned, and hopefully at some point I'll share some of that journey with you. As well, some of you will have big milestones coming this year. You're going to have some big birthdays and anniversaries, and some of you will have kids graduate high school and go off to college or go into elementary school or perhaps get their real first job. Some of you are planning on getting married this year. Congratulations. Some of you will have a baby this year. Some of you will retire. And then perhaps some of you will re-retire. But with all of that, my prayer for you more than anything is that 2023 is your greatest year spiritually. If that happens, I think that this will be the best year of your life the best year of your life spiritually, and that's what I'm praying for you more than anything else. And if it is, then it will probably be your best year ever. Some of you, this year will begin a real faith journey in your life. For the first time in your life, you'll take the step of putting Jesus first. And I, hope, I believe it'll be the best decision you have ever made. And to those of you who have been walking with the Lord, regardless of the number of years, this is always a good time to stop and reflect and perhaps do inventory about how the year has gone this past year. Ask yourself some hard questions. Have I done a good job this past year? What areas am I lacking? This is a time to take a good, honest look at your life. Set some new goals for yourself. And I hope that you can say, I'm a better person this year than I was last year. I have grown uh, during this past year. You know, maybe 2022 was a hard year for you, but perhaps you can say with confidence, I gained ground in the midst of difficulty. I'm in a better place. To put it simply, I want you to grow in 2023. There's always room for growth, right? We can always improve. We can always learn more about God's character. We can develop better habits and patterns in our life that more accurately reflect God's nature. We can grow with God. doesn't matter your age, your season of life, your circumstances. You can get better. You can grow. Consider with me one of the great verses about Jesus in Scripture. It's found in Luke 2.52, and it starts this way. And Jesus grew. Did you hear that? Jesus, the Son of God, the perfect Lamb of God, He came to earth and He grew. And how did He grow? The Scripture continues in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. It's hard to even comprehend, but Jesus, our example, our perfect example in every way, grew. And if He grew, we must as well. Now, a little context here. This verse comes early in Jesus' life. In fact, this is recorded uh, in Luke's gospel account just a few verses in. Jesus is only 12 years old. And the next time we see Jesus in Scripture, He's starting His ministry on earth. He's now 30. This one verse is a transitional verse that, that we have about Jesus. You remember the scene in The Lion King where Simba is a cub and they're singing Hakuna Matata, and suddenly he goes from being a little lion cub to an adult lion. That's kind of what I imagine here. And although 
Uh, we don't know a whole lot of what happened during this period of time. In my mind, I see this like the movie version of Jesus' life. The transition occurs. This is the transitional verse from Jesus as a kid to Jesus as an adult and a minister of the good news. And during that time, what we know is that he grew. He grew. He grew in four areas. The scripture says he grew in wisdom, which is to say he grew intellectually. How can the Messiah King grow in wisdom? It's hard to imagine and comprehend, but this is what Luke records. His fleshly body grew in wisdom. Then he grew in stature, which means that he grew physically. He went through the stages of being a teen and going through puberty and his voice changing and his feet changing size about every six months. And then number three, he grew in favor with God, which means he grew spiritually. His walk with his heavenly father was continually being nourished and was flourishing. And then he grew in favor with man. He grew relationally. He grew and developed in his friendships. And with the carpentry business customers, he was growing relationally. So he grew in four ways, intellectually, physically, spiritually, and relationally. And can I just say this to you today? Think about this. If Jesus grew in these areas... How much more important is it that you and I grow? It is so important. So this is my big question for you. How are you going to grow in 2023? Or said another way, what is your plan to grow? Don't go blindly into 2023. Go in with a plan to be like Jesus and grow in these areas of your life. As the old saying goes, if you don't have a plan, then you're really just planning to fail. So it's so important to have a plan. So all I'm going to do in the next few moments is simply try to equip you, to inspire you, to get some tools in your hand that can possibly provide you with a plan so that you can succeed in the coming year in your personal life. I want to know what can happen if you fail to plan properly. Well, let me share an example of things going off the rails because of poor planning. Here's a letter that was written some years ago by someone to their medical insurance company. You may have heard this account before, but it's always humorous to me to hear this story told again. A man writing to his insurance company, Dear Sir, I'm writing in response to your request for additional information. In block number three of the accident reporting form, I put poor planning as the cause of my accident. You said in your letter that I should elaborate more fully, and I trust that the following details will be sufficient. I'm a bricklayer by trade. On the day of the accident, I was working in lawn on the roof of a new six-story building. When I completed my work, I discovered I had about 500 pounds of brick left over. Rather than carry the brick, bricks down by hand, I decided to lower them in a barrel by using a pulley, which fortunately was attached to the side of the building at the sixth floor. Securing the rope at ground level, I went up to the roof, I swung the barrel out, and loaded the brick into it. Then I went back to the ground and untied the rope, holding it tightly to ensure a slow descent of the 500 pounds of bricks. You will note in block number 11 of the accident reporting form that I list my weight as 135 pounds. Due to my surprise at being jerked off the ground so suddenly, I lost my presence of mind and forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I proceeded up at a rather rapid rate to the top of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming down. This explains the fractured skull and the broken collarbone. Slowed only slightly, I continued my rapid ascent, <clears throat> not stopping until the fingers on my right hand were two knuckles deep into the pulley. Fortunately, by this time, I had regained my presence of mind and was able to hold tightly to the rope in spite of my pain. At approximately the same time, however, the barrel of bricks hit the ground and the bottom fell out of the barrel. Devoid of the weight of the bricks, 
The barrel now weighed approximately 50 pounds. Again, I refer you to my weight in block number 11. As you might imagine, I began a rapid descent down the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming up. This accounts for the two fractured ankles and the lacerations of my legs and lower body. The encounter with the barrel slowed me enough to lessen my injuries when I fell onto the pile of bricks waiting below. Fortunately, only three vertebrae were cracked. I am sorry to report, however, that as I lay there on the bricks in pain, unable to stand, and watching the empty barrel six stories above, I again lost my presence of mind. I let go of the rope. I hope this explanation helps you better understand my injuries. Sincerely yours, James W. Smith. And of course, no relation to the fine Smith family who lead this church. So here's what I want to do to encourage you to have a plan. You can do it right now. Just get out a piece of paper. Maybe you have a journal. I want you to get your journal or your paper and take and divide it into four sections. And before you do anything else, I want you to write Luke 2.52 at the top of that page, at the very top, the areas that you want to grow in. Then I want you to draw out a grid and sit down with some worship music. In fact, I can encourage you to put on a little Phillips, Craig, and Dean and just get comfortable. And then ask God this question, God, how do you want me to grow in each of these four different areas? How do you want me to grow intellectually? How do you want me to grow in stature physically? Same thing with how do I grow in favor with God spiritually and in favor with man relationally? Let me take these step by step for a moment. God, how do you want me to grow in wisdom? How do you want me to grow intellectually this year? Maybe a great question you should ask yourself is this. What is it I need to learn this year? This year, I need to learn more about blank. You fill in the blank. Ask God to help you fill in that blank. Maybe you can write down, I want to read a book a month. For some of you, just forget that. Can we just read one book this year? Year before last, my singing partner, Sean Craig, decided at the beginning of the year that he would read one book a week for the entire year. I thought that was extremely energetic. But guess what? He, he actually accomplished that feat, 52 books in a year. And I applaud that incredible feat. Hey, I'm not suggesting that for you. If you're not reading very much right now, let's just say you're going to try to read at least one good book a month. That's 12 books in a year. That could be a milestone in your life. For some of you, it's been too long since you've read a good book. You're at level 900 on Candy Crush, but you haven't read a good book in so long. Maybe this is the year for you. And for those of you who might use the excuse, I, I just can't read or I don't have the time or the ability. Well, guess what? We now have something called audio books. When you get into your car, you can do audio books, podcasts. And I encourage you to take advantage of these opportunities. There are some incredible podcasts out there. Did you know there's a podcast about each of the presidents of the United States, believe it or not? This year, your pastor told me about a good book he had read called Team of Rivals. And I read it. It was a fascinating read. And for those of you who love history, I recommend it. Your leader, Pastor Smith, is an avid reader and always has six to eight books going at a time. It's, it's time to start growing intellectually, and one of the greatest ways to do that is to open up a good book. And listen, so many books are presented in audible form nowadays. It's just hard to come up with an acceptable excuse for you not growing intellectually, for you not taking the time to read and improve yourself intellectually. And as I said, there's so many great podcast out there. There's leadership podcast, financial podcast. Maybe you space out or listen to music or news or sports talk in the car every morning on your commute to work. What would happen 
If you change things up this year, start putting some things into your head that, that have the ability to improve your knowledge and increase your capacity for life. What else needs to change for you intellectually? Maybe you need to learn how to budget or how to save or how to invest or to get out of debt. Maybe you need to learn a new skill or a hobby or a new language or learn to play an instrument. Guess what? I'm a fairly accomplished piano player, but recently I bought myself a guitar. I want to broaden my abilities. I think that learning the guitar will help me in songwriting. It's like an artist that switches from oil to watercolor and style. You know what? Maybe next time I'm at TLCC, I might just surprise all of you by having a guitar on the stage and playing it while I sing. How are you going to grow in wisdom? Don't be lazy. Plan on doing something to grow in this area of your life. Make a plan and then execute the plan. The second area to ask God is this. God, how do you want me to grow in stature this year? How do you want me to grow physically? Some of you are saying right now, Lord, I don't need to grow. I need to shrink. 2022 was one of the worst years of my life health-wise. I faced a lot of physical challenges with surgeries and back and hip issues. And, and I'm believing in planning. At the beginning of 2023, I want it to be one of the best years of my life health-wise. I've determined to get serious about being healthy, exercising, and weight loss. The Bible says that bodily exercise profits little, but it does, it does profit. And I hope you make some decisions along with me to make this a year of getting healthier. Maybe you need to get a trainer, a new exercise hobby. Hey, pickleball has hit big in the South. Has that made it to Jersey yet? From what I understand, it's not as demanding physically as, as, as tennis is or some other sports, but it's still a good exercise medium. Maybe it's time you decide on picking up something, anything that will get you to a healthier place by the end of this year, you'll be glad you did and you will rejoice in the results. You will feel better about your life, I promise. Maybe you need to find a gym or, or write that down on your list there or have a goal where you're going to work out three days a week or so many minutes a week or day. Maybe you're going to decide to walk for 30 minutes a day. There's no greater exercise. Maybe it has to do with your diet or certain foods or with doing away with soft drinks. Maybe God is going to talk to you about a habit or an addiction that's affecting your health. Maybe you need to start intermediate fasting. I'm asking you to earnestly pray and ask God to show you where you need to step up this year. Maybe it's something connected with sleep. Maybe you need to go to bed 30 minutes earlier uh, this year at night. Maybe you know, just getting that extra 30 minutes or an hour more of sleep a night could be a game changer in your life. I could give you an entire message today about the importance of good sleep and how the lack of sleep impacts every area of your life. Do you think God wants us to be stumbling around every day sluggish and out of sync and dragging uh, during what should be our most productive hours? So whatever it is you think God is calling you to do, Get with the program. Do it. Ask God about it and write it down. Write it down on that paper right now. Set some goals. Get active about it. The next area is to ask yourself, how will I grow in favor with God spiritually? Ask God about this. How do you want me to grow spiritually? Maybe for you it has to do with Bible reading. You're part of a great church that fully supports daily Bible reading and study and growth spiritually. Let me join with your pastors and staff and encourage you to engage with your Bible, even if it's just a verse a day. But really, I think you can do better than that. Make a plan to do something. Let God speak to you about your Bible reading. By the way, God just spoke to you. I just heard Him. Read your Bible more. Did you hear that? That was God. He just spoke through me to you. Maybe your goal is to read the entire New Testament or the whole Bible during this year. There's a wonderful Bible app called YouVersion that will help you in setting up all kinds of plans and devotionals. It'll set out a plan for you to have a daily Bible reading program. 
Maybe your plan should involve really establishing a prayer life and talking to God on a regular basis. That's, that's all prayer is, by the way. Just having a conversation with God. Because of the change in my job status the last few years, I've seen my personal prayer time be able to go to a whole new place. The time element has changed, and I have much more time now to talk to God. I have a list on my phone that I pull out and walk through daily on that list. Your pastor and his wife and his children are on that list. This church that you attend is on that list. I pray for you. Did you know that? God has given me the opportunity to spend way more time praying than I've ever done before. How are you going to go spiritually? Maybe for you it's time to get in a small group or go through the next steps class and get on the GPS pathway that will enable you to start serving in a capacity where you are a contributor. If you want to know about the GPS pathway at TLCC, type that in the chat right now. I, I, I know somebody will be more than happy to help you know how to be more involved in growing yourself spiritually. One of the easiest ways, in my opinion, of getting acquainted and stretching yourself spiritually is to start serving. Get on a team here at TLCC and, and force yourself out of your comfort zone. Who knows? It may be your pathway to meeting someone who will be your friend for life. And as you serve, you will find yourself connecting more spiritually with God, the one who created you with a purpose and a plan. Maybe your spiritual growth plan is connected to inviting someone or a family member to attend church here at, in person at TLCC. In fact, you need to get into the habit of inviting people to church. God may be asking you to lead someone to Christ this year, and wow, what an incredible thing to have happen that I promise you, you will never, ever forget. One of the greatest highlights of my life this past year was to see my next door neighbor commit his life to Jesus. It all started by just talking over the fence. And then we invited them over when the grandkids were having their Easter egg hunt with our grandkids in the backyard. They have a young daughter to live. And, uh, you guys, let Liv come over and join in our Easter egg hunt. And now they're in my backyard with my family. And guess what? I eventually ended up inviting them to church, and they said yes. And that first Sunday they were there, I sat with them on the second row. And the journey has been so rewarding to see them growing and now connecting with others in our family of faith. And there was that exciting Sunday where Pat, my next-door neighbor, decided to make Jesus first in his life. It really takes so little effort to make a difference in someone else's life. This could be your year for that to happen. 2023 could be the year that you lead someone to make that life-changing decision that impacts their life forever. Talk about a special moment. That is one you will never forget. These are just a few of the ways maybe you can consider growing spiritually. And then lastly, God, how do you want me to grow in favor with man? How do you want me to grow relationally? Start with those who are closest to you. If you're married, you need to invest in your marriage. Prioritize a date night once a week. Invest in your marriage. What are you going to do to make improvements in your marriage this year. Don't leave it up to your spouse. You make the plans. Ask your spouse how their day went and then really listen to the response. Check in during the middle of the day to see how they're doing. Pray at least once a day together. Kiss at least once a day. I'm all for that. When you see each other at the end of the day, stop. Ask how they're doing. Welcome them home and ask them how their day went. Talk about more than just this week's agenda. Tell your spouse that you love them as often as possible. And above all, pray for your spouse. They have needs. Ask God to cover them. If you have children, your children need to understand that you need time alone with your spouse. So make time with your spouse a priority. How are you going to grow relationally to those who are closest to you, your family? That's so important. John Maxwell, the great 
leadership writer defines success as this, having the respect of those who know me the best. That means I need to grow in my relationship with my family. Maybe it means recommitting to the family dinner where everybody has to sit down and set aside their digital devices at the table to turn off the TV and have game night or fun night. I think we're missing that in our society today. We spend way too much time scrolling and gaming and doing all kinds of things that separate us. How about spending some time strolling and gaming the old-fashioned way? Whatever happened to board games, Monopoly and Scrabble, where we're forced to connect and to talk? Maybe God is asking you to invest in a new friendship in your growth relationally. I've never been more amazed at God and how He works in our relationships than I have been in the last few years. Over the course of this last few years, God has brought people into my life that as I look back now, I know that He has sent them for this period of time in my life. Usually, you have a set of old friends and they pretty much stay the same as you enter into your 60s. I've been amazed at the people God has brought into my life during this fourth quarter of my life. It doesn't happen, however, if you don't get off the couch and put yourself out there. It's time for you to get yourself out there and be a part of a small group at your church. Grow yourself relationally. That's a great way to see it happen. When Becky and I were here in June speaking at your church, I attended one of your small group parties that Dr. Abe and Dr. Ruby hosted. It was so much fun. We had a blast. It's past time for you to become part of something that will enrich your life. Rid yourself of the excuses and take a risk. Stop it already with the excuses and make it a point to grow relationally. Maybe you're a mom and you're battling a single mom and you're battling loneliness. Say, this year I'm going to prioritize and schedule some play dates with other moms. Write this stuff down and ask God, how do you want me to grow relationally this year in favor with man? We are created as social creatures. Here's just a few ways to help you grow relationally with others. Accept and embrace your differences. God made us with different temperaments and personalities. It's what makes the world interesting. Not everybody's like me, and that's a good thing. Listen well. I've discovered that listening is the cornerstone to building good relationships. So learn to be a good listener. Active listening is such a vital skill. Listening tells the other person that you genuinely care about what they have to say. Give up your time. Time is the most precious commodity that we have. And when you give yours to someone else, it communicates their importance to you. Celebrate milestones. You should celebrate the milestones in other people's lives. Birthdays, promotions, a new job, a new baby, a graduation. Take the time to celebrate those things. You will be shocked at how it makes the relationships in your life grow and flourish. And then never be afraid to apologize. Relationships always have rough patches. Never be too afraid or too stubborn to apologize when you need to. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship. They all have messy moments. You will probably say the wrong thing at the wrong time at some point. And you could find yourself in a place where Winning an argument becomes more important to continuing a friendship or a relationship. Just learn quickly to apologize. These, these are just a few ways to grow in your relationships. And if you want to be like Jesus, this is something you need to do. So I ask you again, what is your plan to grow in 2023? I encourage you over the next few days, spend some time, talk to God, pray and ask Him, what do you want this year to look like for me? How do you want me to grow in these four areas that Jesus Himself grew? In wisdom, stature, and favor with God and with man. Write it down. Make a plan that you can look at. A wise man once said, if you plan your work and you work your plan, your plan will work if it's a good plan. The last thing is this. 
when you make the plan, I want to encourage you to do whatever you have to do to make those things that you write down a priority. Because what's not a priority will be optional. And you don't want these things to become optional. TLCC, I'm believing and I'm praying that this will be the best year of your life. And if you get a plan and work the plan, your plan will work. Let me pray for you this morning. Lord, we stand here at the precipice of a brand new year. It can mean a lot of things for people, but I hope that for those watching right now, it means a new beginning, a chance to make changes in our lives that will help us to be better people, better family members, better friends, and better fellow citizens. I pray for every person listening to this message right now that this year marks the beginning of great things, great growth and wisdom in regards to your health, in regards to your relationships, and especially in regards to your spiritual walk with God. In spite of all the naysayers and those who would want us to think that the world is falling apart and awful things await us, in 2023, I speak the promises and blessings of God over our world, over our country, and over TLCC and its families. God, you alone are our source, our strength, and our provision, and we trust in you with our whole hearts. Again, I thank you so much for joining us. I love you, TLCC. I look forward to seeing you this year at some point. I wish you heaven's best during this coming year. Grow and go is our prayer for you. God bless you. Thank you all so much for joining us on our online campus today, joining us from all over the world and also from our West Orange campus. Thank you again. And thank you, Pastor Dan Deem, so much for blessing us with your word of encouragement today. We really appreciate you. Before we close out, don't head anywhere because we want to connect with you. Don't forget to check in with us if you're a TLCC member or regular attender. And if you're new here, click the new here link so we can also connect with you. Also for our members and regular attenders, this is the time in our service where we mention our tithes and our offerings. We are so thankful for your generosity and your giving and for your faithfulness in your tithing as it allows us to accomplish our mission here at TLCC, which is to inspire people to the life God dreams for them as we spread his love in ever widening circles. If this is the time and service that you choose to give, you can go to tlcc.org forward slash give or hit the give link on your screen. That'll take you to information for uh, easy and safe ways that you're able to give today. Again, thank you so much for your generosity and for your faithfulness in this season. And separate from tithes and offerings, I'd love to mention our Christmas missions offering that we've been discussing recently. Our Christmas missions offering is funding our missions work over uh, the next year at TLCC. And we have asked our church to give towards this goal by either giving uh, today or in this season or by possibly making a pledge that is then fulfilled by the Easter season. This is so key to us being able to accomplish the part of our mission, which is to spread God's love in ever widening circles. If you'd like to see more information on either how to give or more information on what the Christ Christmas missions offering goes towards, then you can go to tlcc.org forward slash Christmas offering. Well, that is it for us. Christian, would you mind sending them off with a benediction? That'd be my pleasure. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you. We pray that this year that you may be inspired more and more towards the life that God has dreamed for you. We pray that you will realize and experience the fresh new things, the new promises in the season that God wants to bring you towards, that he will empower you by his spirit, that he will give you fortitude, that he will excite your spirit towards living out the John 10, 10 life, the more and better life than you have ever dreamed of, the life that Jesus has dreamed for you. Amen. We hope that all of you are blessed. And thank you so much for joining us at TLCC Online today. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.